Yup, right back at the end of the video, man. Hey, man, we got 15 facts about the NBA that may just blow your mind. Hey, man, look, man. Y'all know we came here to do. Ah, my teeth. Hey, man, look, man. Y'all know we came here to do, man. Y'all know we didn't come here to do, man. We came here to get straight to the point. What we didn't come to do, man, is all that other stuff, man. With that being said, I'm going to get right to the video. Over any other skill set in the game, getting a bucket mm -hmm. will always reign supreme. Now, we all know who the all-time leader in points is. But more importantly, and never really discussed, is points generated. An overall total of the number of points a player has created through both scoring and assists. The leaderboard for a statistic like this will only feature the most productive and impactful players to ever play the game. Well... Here is a chart of players who have generated the most points in NBA history. At the bottom, you have some all-time great players. James Harden. Jordan, Westbrook, the point guard Jack? himself, Chris Paul. As you go up the list, you won't see Kobe. any more active players. Just legends of the game. MJ, Chris Paul. Kobe, Kareem. And all the way at the top, you have John My, Stockton. I thought you were going to say LeBron. Well, LeBron at. Stockton scored nearly Chris Paul right there. Well, LeBron at. Well, LeBron at. Dirt, Mellow. Yay, history. Oh, damn, my fault. With 56 points in his career and has by far the most assists in league history. Wait, we're missing just one player. That's what I was saying. Where he at? There he is. With 56, I mean, he's been in the league for a long time, though. Let's be realistic. Career, LeBron James already has by far the most points generated of any player in NBA. He was in the league. He in the league for a long time. Crazier, he's still got plenty of basketball ahead of him. Today, I've got some NBA facts that may just blow your mind. We've done quite a few of these in the past, maybe four or five. I don't really know. I've done a lot of these videos, and I'm losing track at this point. But with that subpar intro out of the way, let's get into this. This past week, the Oklahoma City Thunder had a starting five with an average age of just 20 years and 219 days old. The very next day, the Oklahoma I ain't Sooners, even, I ain't a even college yet. team in the same state as the Thunder, had a starting five of 21 years and 313 days old. Sounds impossible, but it's true. And it's blowing my mind. On a similarly odd note, Welcome but that mean they got it. They stay in the college for longer now, you can raise your credit scores or something like that. Experience. It ain't really been no real busting drafts lately. The drafts been boo boo. Download the app now. Last season on February 6, 2020, the Rockets played the Lakers in LA. It's like you have like five people out there. It's over. Height of six feet four and a half inches. On that same exact night, at the same exact time, in the same city. The high school basketball team Modern Day had a starting five with an average height of six foot seven inches, two and a half inches taller than the average height of the Rocket starters. What's even more strange is that the average height for a player on Modern Day's entire roster was still taller than the average player on the Houston Rockets' entire roster. And once they ain't got nobody seven foot though. To explode trying to process this information. Russell Westbrook has redefined the triple double. A mm -hmm. stat line that was once a he regular, get that for fun. has now become a common occurrence. In fact, just this week, Russell Westbrook broke the all-time Washington Wizards franchise record for triple doubles in just 38 games. Yeah, he be going cool. The quickest a player has that ever man be going the cool. Record. In these 38 and anybody games, talking Westbrook about him, folks. 16 triple doubles. Because he on a, a nobody games, team. Westbrook notched more triple doubles than all of these players had in their Damn, entire career. Has your mind been blown yet? Let's move on. Sean Livingston, a former point guard in the NBA for those unfamiliar, played in 959 games and took 5,072 shots in his 14 seasons in the NBA. Me quit. And only I mean, he retired. Three -pointers oh my God. Career. 15. Five thousand seventy-two divided by fifteen. No, wrong word. Fifteen divided by five thousand seventy-two. Ten. 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 Ten
half ten. That man shot twenty nine percent, bro. In fact, Livingston. No, that's not twenty nine percent. That's low to twenty nine percent. Two thousand and seventeen hit a combined twenty three pointers in back to back games, which means that Sean Livingston made less threes in his entire fourteen year career than Steph made in a forty minute span. When Will Chamberlain was playing in the NBA, the league did not keep track of blocked shots. It wasn't until the season after Wilt retired when the NBA finally began to officially record the stat. But through some extensive research a few years ago, Reddit users were able to collect data from 112 games where Wilt's block shots were recorded. Now, these games only represent about 9% of his career. But with this sample size of games, it was discovered that Wilt averaged about 8.8 .8 blocks per game for his entire career. And since Will Chamberlain played 1200 So so Will Chamberlain. Career, we can make a Bro, look at his up. Just how many shots Will He almost touching the, a the top of the backing so board. That no player since Wilt has even come remotely close. So so In Will fact, Chamberlain has an of 10,600 career I'm blocks. No Bell Rock. No sock rock. Pull up show stop. You know how rock they're not came in this game. Oddly enough, possibly the most impressive defensive player in league history was Wilt's longtime rival, Bill Russell. But when you think of the he best tall, look how big he is. Up, most think of Scotty, Scotty. Pippen, Kawhi, maybe Ben Wallace, or Hakeem. Mm -hmm. But the answer to this question is not nearly as subjective as you may think. The answer is Bill Russell. Yeah. It's not even close. In fact, Russell has the NBA record for most defensive win shares in a season. Oh, and he also has the second most defensive win shares in a single season. And the third and fourth, and fifth, sixth, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. Russell is known for his rings, but his individual greatness has been underappreciated over the years. For perspective, in Wilt Chamberlain's illustrious career, he was the best scorer for seven seasons. In Bill Russell's career, he was the best defensive player in the league for eleven seasons. In other words, Bill Russell was better at defense than Wilt Chamberlain was at scoring. Just let that sink in. Every Chamberlain, then Roy Chamberlain scored 100. Successful history of both the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics. These two organizations winning nearly half of all NBA championships since the NBA was created. But what most people don't know is that only two of the 17 top final scores of all time did not play for the Lakers or Celtics. You may have heard of these two players. Michael Jordan. I was gonna say Steve MJ. Curry. I was gonna At say this MJ. Point, most fans know Steve Kerr as the coach of the Golden State Warriors. Other fans may know him as the sharpshooter from the Bulls' three championships in the 90s, but not many people know that Steve went to five finals and won all five. Five for five on the biggest stage. In those five finals appearances, Kerr only scored 96 points. That's a ring for every 19 points scored in the finals. For comparison, Michael Jordan won a ring for every 196 points he scored in the finals. Kobe won a ring for every 187 points he scored in the finals. And LeBron has won a ring for every 390 points he scored in the finals. Steve Kerr, GOAT status confirmed. Lately, the NBA has seen some all-time great games. And oftentimes, these games occur... I ain't get it. I ain't gonna lie. That's too much information for my brain to process. But action. I guess... But quite possibly the most incredible regular season night in NBA history occurred on December 8th, 1961. When a 27-year-old Elgin Baylor put up an almost incomprehensible stat line against the Philadelphia Warriors. 63 points, 31 rebounds, and 7 assists. To this day, one of the greatest performances in NBA history. He said six plus seven turns down. Every ounce of production they got out of Baylor that night. He's so stiff though. Warriors because Will Chamberlain dropped seventy-eight and forty-three on the same exact night. Oh man, seventy-eight points and forty-three rebounds in a single game. These two legends combined for one hundred and forty-one points. Y'all see his stutter step, bro. Rebounds. His status that anything I'm absolutely certain of it's that there will never be another NBA game quite like this one now some NBA fans may know of a stat called MVP shares which is basically a my boy that Rose man you know I saw a post the other day they say who better MVP Rose no Rose in his prime or Steph Curry in his prime and you know what I said? I said Rose in his prime. You want you know why? Because Rose didn't get to his prime and he was MVP, bro. How do y'all even compare that, bro? Like, he didn't even get to his peak prime, bro. He got injured and he still was MVP. 
How do y'all compare the MVP versus the United the unanimous MVP? Is that even really like? Come on, bro, stop that. Just stop that, bro. Y'all disrespect the Rose when y'all try to compare him to. When y'all try to compare him to Curry in a prime. Like every man, come on, bro. Nobody can stop Rose in his prime, bro. Come on, bro, stop that. And I heard Rose and Kanye got some got some stuff going on. You know I'm going by them. Rose, my favorite basketball player. Kanye, my favorite rapper. You know I'm buying it. It's a grind. No cap. I don't care how much it costs. For example, I'm paying for if that. If a player didn't receive any MVP votes in a season, he would get zero MVP shows that season. If a player wins the award and receives 80% of the first place votes, he would get 0.8 MVP shares. Now, this stat is interesting because as I just laid out, you don't even need a full MVP share to actually win the MVP. For example, Derrick Rose has 0.98 MVP shares, but has an MVP award in his trophy case. On the other end of the spectrum, you have guys who have piled up multiple top five MVP finishes but have never won the award. Like Chris Paul, who has 1.66 MVP shares but has no MVP to show for it. Shaq and Kobe both have more than four MVP shares for their entire career but have just one regular season MVP each. But what's really interesting is that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has the most regular season MVPs in league history with six, despite having far less MVP shares than both LeBron and Michael Jordan. I don't know what none of this means, but Kareem could I have guess. Award, he did. Whereas players like okay. Michael, Kobe, LeBron, and Shaq possibly got robbed of at least one regular season MVP award. On another note, here's a graph of the top active NBA players when it comes to MVP shares. And here's LeBron. Oh, wait. Sorry. Dang. Here's LeBron. Jerry West has scored 40 points or more in the finals 10 times, which doesn't sound like a lot at first. Until you realize that's more 40-point finals performances than Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan combined. But the logo's greatness doesn't end there. Jerry West also has the most 30 point games in the finals history. They say Jerry West was a boss. And he the, and he the logo. History as well. Luka Doncic That's probably why he the logo. 11th all time in triple doubles in NBA history despite playing just a little over 2 seasons worth of games in his career. In fact, throughout his career so far, Luka tallies up a triple double one in every 5 games. A triple double rate far exceeding any other player in NBA history. Coming into the NBA, Zion Williamson was the most hyped prospect since LeBron James. However, mm -hmm. that hype has quickly died down in just his second season in the NBA, despite Zion's incredible play so far. In fact, out of all active players, the quickest to reach 1,200 career points isn't LeBron. It isn't Kevin Durant or Damian Lillard or Luka Doncic. It's Zion Williamson. And they don't say nothing about him, huh? been everything we expected, and yet somehow he went from overrated to underrated in just two seasons. Just merch. I, I just said that, bro. I literally just said that. I said, what happened to Zion, bro? Don't nobody talk about Zion no more, bro. Nobody. Like, you don't even hear about Zion, but the whole time, that man really out there getting buckets. They just not saying nothing about it, bro, because I don't know why they not saying nothing about it. Probably because of the Pelicans, because of the Pelicans, or I don't know, Brandon. I don't know what it is. I don't know. And if anyone was wondering which player reached 1,200 points faster than anyone else in NBA history, surprise, it's Wilt Chamberlain. By a lot. I mean, but if Zion and Wilt are two of the fastest to accomplish this feat, who is the slowest? Well, from October of 1983 to February of 1991, over the course of seven and a half years, a player by the name of Greg Kites eventually reached a career point total of 1,205. This took him 473 games to accomplish. Good job, Greg. I don't even know who that is. But I mean, I guess. I don't know who that is. That's probably why. But hey, man, look, man, y'all be smooth, busy, man. Keep your head up, man. I love y'all.